Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. If this is the first video of mine that you're clicking on, to give you some context, last year I did a no buy year. This year I am doing my year of one. It is about reintroducing shopping and consuming into my life, but in a controlled way in that I can only buy one thing a month. This is my January haul video. This is my one item that I bought in the month of January. So it's not a traditional haul. I am obviously going to show you what I bought, talk about why I bought it, but what I mainly want these videos to be about is about the process of shopping, the process of making the decisions, the process of what else I considered, why it got eliminated or why I decided to prioritise something else over it. And it's really more so that I can watch over the year what my shopping behaviours are and what it is that informs my buying process and my purchasing process. So it's not just simply a haul in terms of me being like, oh, I bought these and you should buy them too. It is a bit more in depth than that. So if that sounds good to you, please stick around and let's get started with my January haul. So my one item in the month of January is from Dolce & Gabbana and it's a pair of shoes. Who saw that one coming, eh? It's always a pair of shoes. Last year under my no buy, I had certain exceptions. So I was allowed a Valentine's Day gift, a birthday gift and a Christmas gift. And I nearly bought myself these shoes as my birthday gift last year, but I thought they would probably go on sale. And that was what stopped me buying them in July and I ended up buying other Dolce & Gabbana shoes in July. I'm really amassing quite a collection, but they really, really suit my feet. And then I was nearly gonna buy them for Christmas, but I bought a bag instead because I knew in December what I was planning this year's project to be. So I sort of, as much as I bought the bag as my Christmas gift to myself, my intention was very much to buy these as my January purchase, even at the time when I bought the bag. And basically as soon as the 1st of January came, I purchased these shoes. To get into them, they come in this pink polka dot box, which is not my favourite box that they've ever done, but it is a nice sort of fun one. Once you open the box, you get uh, the dust bags for the shoes. So again, the pink polka dots. And then these are the shoes. So I'll take, I'll take the stuffing out of them so that you can maybe see them a little bit better. This is what they look like. As you can see, I have not worn them yet because I still have the tag on this shoe and they are immaculate on the bottom. But they are these really pretty, um, they were called beige on the website, but they're, they're a sort of pinky nude. They're actually a really good match to my skin tone, if you guys can see that. They're a very sort of Caucasian, super fair skin tone. I thought these were just absolutely beautiful. I love, there's sort of something quite vintage about them and I love vintage style, I love vintage fashion and I feel like if something is a bit vintage looking it's automatically quite timeless because I know that even when I'm not going through a vintage phase I will always come back around to it. They've got these beautiful sort of buttons. They're not functional buttons, they're just elastic. So you just slip them on, I'll do some cutaways so that you can see them on my feet. But yeah, these are my shoes that I bought and I think they're absolutely beautiful. So the item themselves aside, let's talk about the spend, the decision making process and what else was considered and why it was considered and why it was not the winner. Now, the shoes did go on sale. I was right to hold off and not buy them for myself for my birthday. So they were reduced to £465, which is obviously still very expensive, but they were nearly £800 at full price, so it was quite a good saving. Honestly, my the main decision-making process, as I said, I bought these on literally the 1st of January. So I made that decision about my January spend really, really early in the month. Like 1st of January, the item had been bought. That was it. I couldn't buy anything else for January because I can't roll forward my one thing a month. In a way, that made it a lot easier. So I said this in my intro for my year of one project is that I find it easier to almost just be like, no, I can't buy anything than I do to moderate. I feel like moderation is more difficult for me than just an absolute rule being in place. But the main thing was because they were on sale, A, they might have sold out because they were on sale, but B, even if they didn't sell out, 
in the past and this may change because of the way that things have been different obviously with the pandemic this year retailers are struggling but generally Dolce & Gabbana have their sale up for a set amount of time and then it gets taken offline and whenever things get taken offline even if they're still in stock unlike the last day of sale once they go offline they do not come back online so I have to presume that Dolce & Gabbana they have outlets in certain places not near me sadly what I'm presuming happens is that once their sale is taken offline the stock goes to their outlet shops and just gets sold through. A pair of earrings that I didn't buy on their sale, that I really wish I had bought and they were still in stock on the last day of sale and they never came back. And I, I still think about them every so often and I'm still like, I wish I had you. So my, that, it was almost like mainly sort of fear driven that I committed to those shoes on the 1st of January because I thought if I don't get these, they're gonna get taken off when the sale goes offline and they won't come back. Um, and B, because they are now reduced, they might sell out more quickly than they have done, even though they've been sitting available to buy on the website for literally a year. Well, because I started wanting them in Christmas 2019. So I literally wanted these for like a whole year before I bought them, because um, I thought they were gonna go on the summer sale originally, and I would have got them for my birthday if they had done, but they didn't. So the one for them was there for quite a long time before I made the purchase. I have no regrets over committing to the purchase because I know it wasn't an like, impulsive um, want for some expensive shoes. But the thing that really drove it over was the fact they went on sale and I thought they would become unavailable. Even though I made that purchase on the 1st of January, there were still things that I saw over the rest of the month that I would have considered in place of the shoes had I not purchased the shoes. I've got sort of four other categories of item that I want to discuss. And the first one is considered items, which is not so applicable in this instance because the shoes were bought so early, but it's things that I would have really very genuinely considered buying as my monthly purchase. The second is like big wish list items, which are things that I really want that are very expensive that are just not going to be something I can just buy in a month. There are things that I would need to save up for. Although my monthly purchase is not budgeted and I can buy whatever I want, it's budgeted still in the sense of my real life budget. In terms of I get paid a certain amount and I have to obviously pay my bills and pay everything that I need to pay and then I have what's kind of left over and I have my budget as well that I actually live off of so that gets taken out and there's a set amount left there that is what I have to allocate to these kinds of purchases and it's also my holiday money my so what's kind of left that's not saving or essential spending or bill paying and is not budget is my disposable income but that's also what pays my holidays or what becomes my holiday spending money it's what I save for my holiday spends from as well as paying my holidays from and, the, and travel and holidays are a big priority for me hopefully in 2021 restrictions permitting we will be back to that obviously I didn't get to do very much last year because of the restrictions and it being what it was. There is a natural budget happening there even though I haven't budgeted this as such so because of that if I want to buy certain things that are on my sort of big ticket wish list items they're not the sort of thing I can just buy in a month I would have to think I want to buy that dress so I will like save for a couple of months to buy. And I then have my other wish list, which are items I'm quite interested in discussing with you because they are things I've wanted for a long time, but that I could have bought. They're not big ticket items, they're things I could have bought within a month, but something is just stopping me from committing to them, but I've wanted them for more time. Then I've wanted a lot of other things that are on like my considered items list for example. And then I've also got the things that I considered very very briefly. Last year when I was doing my no buy I didn't make any sort of record of things that I wanted to buy that I couldn't because I didn't want to have a record to revisit when it came to it that I was able to buy things because there are things that I want and I want them so much in the moment that three weeks later I don't remember and that's what the year of one is about is about really trying to make all my purchases so considered that there is no way I could 
forget about having made them and the sort of initial step of that is making sure then that in the first place there are things that I wouldn't forget about wanting after a few weeks. I feel like for this year's project having that record of what was considered and rejected and why it was rejected is quite important because I think that might show where the pattern goes over the rest of the year or you might see a pattern of things being on my wish list for a couple of months and then me sort of finally saying mm, no actually this has hung around for this long and I've not committed to it so I think we're going to knock it off and then things might come back on the wish list when I say mm, actually still want it kind of thing so I feel like having the list this year is helpful to understanding myself more deeply. That sounds very um, self-indulgent but it is what it is so I hope it's still interesting to you guys. So let's go through considered items first. The first thing that I very seriously considered and to be honest I've been considering this for a while is a treadmill. Now not only have I been considering this for a while Last year when I was on my no buy technology was excluded from my no buy because it's not a problematic spending area for me and neither is fitness equipment if you were wanting to put it under that and um, it's not the sort of thing that I sit and look at in my spare time. But when lockdown first happened last year I ordered a treadmill but apparently so did everyone else in the world and my order got cancelled because they couldn't fulfil it and I kind of just went oh well and the weather was nice during the first lockdown as well so I just kind of let it go and then I started thinking about it more and more and more and then we got into this year and I've not excluded technology or fitness or anything from my year of one so if I buy anything like that this year it would be my one item that I would buy. I wouldn't be buying it on some sort of exclusion free pass. It would be my item and it's it's not an exciting item in the slightest. Like do you know that way if you were talking about if I was to Marie Kondo this list of things that I want in terms of what sparks joy, the treadmill in and of itself does not spark joy. There's no excitement attached to a treadmill that I'm not eager to wear it. I'm not eager to put it on my face the way that I am with fashion and beauty or even with things like homewares that I like that provide like a visual beauty to my space. The treadmill ticks none of those boxes. Like, it would be the first thing to get scored off this list if we were going by sparking joy. However, I got really into walking last year. I really, really enjoyed it. But the thing for me is that it feels really unproductive to go out and go walking. It takes so much of a chunk of my day to go off and do that that I can't because all I'm doing is walking about the street so I'm able to listen to podcasts or audiobooks and that at least kind of makes me feel like I'm reading a book in a sense as well as walking or I'm consuming like a podcast and whatever but I can't watch things as I'm walking and I would feel like I would go out my walk for however many hours and then come in and feel like I had to be productive because I felt like my sort of downtime had been used walking and more and more and more recently and this has really compounded in that in the past few weeks at the start of January we have had such bad weather it's been so icy that it's not been possible to go out walking outside um, because I have tried it because I have been dedicated to this Fitbit. This Fitbit is probably at fault for me wanting a treadmill because I got this last Christmas um, and I now like obsessively look at my steps. Even when it's been super icy I've been putting on my walking boots and going out but I've been walking so slowly that I've been doing all the steps and not burning the same amount of calories because my heart rate is going nowhere near as fast as it would be going if I was walking at a normal speed because I'm walking so slowly on ice. So the ice has really impacted on my ability to do my chosen form of exercise in the last month and I feel it like I feel not nice in my body at the moment in a way that I haven't felt uncomfortable or not at peace in my body for a while and, and I, I think it's just the lack of movement and um, you know every other month even through December I was going out every single day I was getting my heart rate up I was moving my body in a way that I've just not been able to do because of the weather in January so I feel like the treadmill it would be a really good purchase to make 
basically from that point of view. The one that I've picked, I'll link it down below, folds away so it wouldn't be taking over my space when I wasn't using it and that is a really key factor in the one that I've picked that I would like to buy, you know, the specific treadmill. And the last thing about getting a treadmill is in terms of taking that downtime, I got to a point where I was like, I've just been out walking for hours, I need to come back in now and be really productive and get things done. I didn't feel like I could go out walking for as long as I was going out and then come in and just like slob about and watch television. So I feel like if I got one now, what I could do is get my steps in, but I could set it up with my laptop so that I could like watch my YouTube videos or watch Netflix or you know, watch whatever it is I'm trying to watch and I could sort of combine media consumption that I want to be doing with getting my steps in. It's one chunk of time rather than needing to be two or depending on how like fast I was walking in the treadmill and um, you know I could be writing or I could be editing a video or something whilst I was walking if I can kind of set it up like that. So that is why I want the treadmill basically. I feel like it would be a really sensible purchase. I feel like I would get a lot of use out of it. In terms of how not great in my body I feel at this exact moment, I feel like it would be a massive help to how I feel in my body and my sort of mental health as well as my physical health. But I didn't buy it because I'd already bought the shoes. And the thing is, I've said all of that and there's still part of me that's like, yeah, but there, there are other more exciting things to buy. And it is, it's that Marie Kondo-esque, like, this is so sensible, it ticks so many boxes. It is probably, out of everything else I'm going to talk about in this list, it is probably the right thing to buy. But it does not fill me with joy or excitement to buy it. It feels like a very adult purchase to make. It feels boring as a purchase to make and it's ugh. It's just one of those ones like I want to own a treadmill and I know how owning a treadmill would enrich my life but I don't want to pay for a treadmill. It's one of those scenarios. And the thing is like once the gyms reopen I would still want to go back to the gym when it comes to it in terms of like going to my body pump classes and things so it's not like I could also justify it by being like well i won't rejoin the gym and then I'll save on my gym membership because I'll have the treadmill. Like, I would have both so it's not going to save me money in that aspect either. But I do think it'd be quite a sensible thing to buy but it just does not spark joy. So that that is, that is all my conflicted feelings on the treadmill. So that was the first item that was like a serious consideration. If I hadn't bought the shoes, the treadmill was very seriously considered. And the next thing that was very seriously considered and shouldn't have been because th it was a very specific thing um, and that it was a gift with purchase deal and I shouldn't have given it as much energy as I did this month. I'm, th the thing with my no buy was partly that it just stopped me from having to consider things which was good I think from a mental point of view because pre no buy when I was in that real frenzy of shopping it wasn't just about the amount I was spending it was about the amount of time I was dedicating to looking for things to buy for looking for things to want for chasing what you know for I was obviously trying to buy happiness I was trying to buy something I couldn't buy through buying a thing but I was so constantly chasing this idea that if I just found the right thing to buy it was going to make me happy in a lasting way. And it was the mental energy that I was putting into that that I was really uncomfortable with as well as you know the the amount that I was spending it and as well as the, the sort of spatial um, knock-on of being in a really overcrowded space with too much stuff and the knock-on that that had to my mental health. It's just the mental energy that I was diverting to shopping that I really wanted to be stopping and I feel like I did stop that last year whereas I feel like this particular purchase really took up a lot of my mental energy this month and it shouldn't have because it was a straight up no but that was also why it took so much of my time because I was trying so desperately to find some kind of loophole 
to let me get this. So what it was, was that Charlotte Tilbury did an offer on her website where if you spent £75 or more, you got a free Hollywood airbrush, whatever, foundation. Not the magic foundation, the, the one that's like one step up in coverage from it. Now, for a start, I really want the magic foundation. I've had a sample of it before and really liked it. I've never even tried the Hollywood foundation, so I've never sampled it, I've never swatched it, I literally know nothing about it, so I don't even know if I like it. But I am going to need a new pressed powder at some point this year, and she has a set on her website that is like a pressed powder that comes with the sculpting brush, which I really want, and I got the sculpt and highlight jewel thing for Christmas. Now I really want the sculpting brush to go with it. I got the little like mini one. Um, it's like super cute. It's like business card size. I love it. Aesthetically, I've not actually used it yet, so I'm not saying I love the product, although I'm quite confident in the product, just because so many people have obviously said such good things about it. But now I want brush and I need the powder. Well, I don't need the powder right now. That is a ridiculous statement, but I will need the powder as a genuine replacement at some point in the year. So she has this set on her website where it's the powder and the brush for £64, I think. I think it's £64 that I will probably buy at some point. So I was like, well, I, I need that need in the abstract, do not need it at all sense of need. But that was only £64. So I needed something else to get me to the £75 to get the free foundation because this free foundation became what was driving all of this. The smallest thing I could have got that would have got me over the threshold of the £75 along with buying the powder and brush set was her double-ended eyeliner, the green one, but it's out of stock so I couldn't buy it and I was getting really really frustrated as though I was going to buy it if it was in stock, which I wasn't because I'd bought the shoes, but I was getting so annoyed about it because I do really quite fancy that eyeliner. So. I was like planning that and then I was like well I can't get the eyeliner so I could get the magic foundation which is the foundation I want in the first place. Bear that in mind through all of this is that actually what I want is the magic foundation and I do want to try her pressed powder at some point so I feel like when I run out of pressed powder hers is the one I'm going to try and then I want the brush so that's actually the three things that I want. The thing I was getting for free if I spent £75 which means it's not really for free was the other foundation that I've never even tried. But I was so determined that I was like, I'm going to find a way to get this free foundation. Whilst this was all going on, I had bought the shoes. So I wasn't going to buy any of it. That was the thing. And then I went through this whole thing and been like, oh, I could call the powder a replacement and whatever, but like, I can't really call the foundation or the eyeliners a replacement. And I was like, right, so I need it to be one purchase. So then I was sitting looking at the look in a boxes that Charlotte Tilbury does because the way that the year of one works it's just I can buy one thing so if I can buy like the way that she sells her look in a box it's a one click add to basket and you buy it and it's all the products but it's it's one thing that you buy to get all those products it's not buying every product individually so I could buy a look in a box or I could buy a lipstick that's that is the thing with the year of one. Sitting looking at the look in a boxes and I have like the vintage vamp one like basically since they launched but I've again I've never actually committed to it it's one of those things that is in the back of my mind has always been like oh I like that but I've just never actually gone through with buying it and there must be a reason for that but anyway so then I was like sitting considering do I get a look in a box and then I can get the free foundation at which point this free foundation has lift like at least it started with the powder and the brush that I genuinely want and will use and I know I will use like I'll pan the powder like I know that would actually happen and if I got the other foundation the magic foundation that I actually want it'll take me a while because I've got too much obviously I've got too much of everything beauty wise but I know I would eventually use that and then the eyeliner is double ended and I feel like I probably wouldn't use it up but I know I would get quite a lot of use out of it and I could put it in a project pan. Whereas buying a look in a box is completely removed from literally everything about the way that I am trying to shop this year. The whole point in the year of one is to reduce the quantity of stuff that I'm bringing in 
and I was using the loophole of the fact that this would be one purchase to start saying well I'll just get a look in a box and then I'll get the free foundation and the foundation wouldn't count because I didn't pay for it but I had bought the shoes so I should have stopped thinking about this and I didn't I didn't check out on it obviously and see the day that offer ended the absolute weight that I felt had lifted off me because I didn't have to think anymore about the fact that I was not getting a free foundation because I was doing this year of one project like the relief that that offer didn't exist in the world and I wasn't that it wasn't existing and I was existing not taking advantage of it and the stress that that was I mean it was ridiculous it was so ridiculous and the thing is I don't know obviously what the next 12 months are going to hold but I can say right now that my you'll see even as we go through this list I don't see it being a big beauty buying spree that I go on with these 12 items like I think I'll be much more interested in adding to my wardrobe which is ironic because obviously so much of my problematic spending went on makeup um but I don't I don't foresee makeup being what most of my 12 items become over the year the absolute frenzy of wanting to take advantage of that offer for a free foundation that is a foundation I haven't even looked at in person, haven't tried, haven't shade matched myself. I mean, it, what, it was a real frenzy and I was literally, I mean, see the amount of time I spent on the Charlotte Tilbury website, like refreshing the eyeliner to see if it'd come back into stock and adding different combinations to my basket and taking one item out and trying to figure out the sort of way to be closest, just over the limit to get the free foundation. All of it was just like so far removed from what I am trying to move towards. It was ridiculous. As soon as the day came, it was like towards the end of January, that that offer was no longer a thing. The need for it all just vanished. Like once that offer wasn't there, I could have still gone on. I could have still bought that powder and brush and I could have still bought you know that foundation obviously I couldn't have bought it because I'm doing my year of one but in theory I could have bought all of that but it wouldn't have been coming with a free foundation and when it wasn't coming with a free foundation that that drive and that need to have it in that moment had gone. I know I will probably buy that powder whenever I eventually work through my pressed powders I know that's the one I'm planning to buy but I'm quite content now that that offer is off to be like yeah I'll, I'll wait until I've actually panned the existing ones and then I will buy one and that is the one I will buy but I will buy it when it is getting bought to be used rather than buying it to put it in the drawer and wait until I finish some other stuff first and it, it really it was that offer that is what was like driving all of it which is it shows you how effective these offers can be and in terms of things that I would have bought this month was I not doing this project I definitely would have checked out on charlottetilbury.com 100% there are no two ways about it because I was trying to find a way to justify checking out even though I'd bought my item and that was the only thing that stopped me was I was like well no I've bought my shoes so I can't buy anything else and I can't roll forward my items I can roll them like over so if I didn't buy something in January, I can roll it to February and I would have two items that I could buy in February, but I can't roll February's forward into January. So that was the only thing that stopped me was having this rule in place that for all I tried, I tried to find a way to somehow turn one item into more than one item and I couldn't do it, thankfully. And I am thankful now, now that I'm recording this, I'm so thankful I couldn't do it. But how much I wanted this free gift was just sickening. It shows me that when things are on offer and there are free gifts, I need to really consider, would I buy this if there wasn't a free gift? And do I actually want this or do I want a free gift? And if I want the free gift, why do I want the free gift? Particularly if it's something that I've never wanted enough to check out in person prior to it being a free gift. 
what is the psychology of that? To move on to the next item that I am cons considering, and I do love this, is a dress from Self Portrait and it is like a blazer with a skirt attached but it is a dress that's an all-in-one but it looks like a two-piece and I think it is one of the chicest things I have ever seen. I think it's so beautiful, I absolutely love it. It is not cheap, it is around £400 but I think it looks way more expensive than that. I think it is so stunning. I really really want it. Things that hold me back from wanting it is that it's one of those ones that the waist placement is important and I am short so it was, it's going to need to get taken up at the shoulders um, so that the waist stays on the waist rather than just having an inch or so taken off the bottom which is a bit more complicated and it's made even more complicated by the fact that the shoulders in question are a blazer. So that's my reservation with it but I do think the dress is beautiful so beautiful one of the other things that stops me thinking that I will buy it in the near future is that I want to also buy a Dior belt to go with it and I think this is one of the things that I need to consider is that I like buying outfits I think that's one of the things I really have learned not just through last year but through the years in general is that when I buy separates so I went through this phase because everyone says if you get separates you can mix and match them blah 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 I'm quite happy wearing the same outfit head to toe over and over again it doesn't bother me like I'm past that point of my life where being an outfit repeater bothers me I am Lizzie McGuire I don't care but what I like having is a full outfit so I like buying things and instantly knowing how I'm going to wear them so in a way buying a dress is the simplest thing I can do because I buy the dress and then I have shoes or I maybe need to buy shoes and that's pretty much it. That is the same with this dress is that I want to replace the belt with this Dior belt but the Dior belt is more expensive than the flipping dress. I think the belt's around 600 mark um, but I want the two of them to wear together and this is the thing is that I know sometimes when I buy things and I envision it as part of an outfit I don't wear it until I've got the whole outfit and that's what I also don't want to be happening this year is I don't want things to come in and sit for ages before they get used. Now obviously I've just shown you my shoes that I did buy this month and they have got the tag still on them they have not been used but that is a combination of the weather and lockdown. If we were out and about at the moment I would have found somewhere to wear those shoes to 100% but I am not I am not having the first weight of those shoes be to wear them to work I'm just not doing it so that that's why the shoes haven't been worn and also then considering the reality of the environment at the moment if I buy the dress and the belt it's again still not going to get worn until we're back out and about but I do think it would be such a beautiful combination. That slightly puts me off buying it and that I would like to buy the two together so that I just own the two together rather than buying one and then having to wait to buy the other. At the same time because the belt is Dior and it's I think it's part of their like core collection the belt is probably going to stay in stock whereas the dress is probably not going to stay in stock so that's where I'm at at the moment with the dress. Third item that's also part of this sort of fantasy outfit that I have built around this dress also would quite like a pair of Christian Louboutin Eloise's. I've wanted them for a while and I have other things that I think they would go with. I feel like a pair of just like black slightly pointed stilettos and a patent and a suede would be quite a like I have other black shoes but they're all they're all sort of styled in a way. I feel like a pair of very plain but sleek chic stilettos would be quite a sensible addition to my wardrobe. Sensible in the sense of you know to wear at the weekend because I would not be wearing Christian Louboutin shoes to work. I work in the construction industry not in I, like I work in an office but it's I work with a bunch of men who turn up to work in safety gear like None of them are going to appreciate my Christian Louboutins so I wouldn't be wearing them to work so it's not like I'm saying they'd be a sensible thing that I would start wearing every single day. I do think they would go with quite a lot but I feel like specifically they would go with this fantasy outfit that I've constructed so those three items 
in a way have all been considered but I feel like the first part of the outfit that I would buy is the dress because I think it's the most likely to go out of stock the quickest. And then the last two items are another two that go hand in hand which is again partly why they're not going to be bought individually because I want to have them to wear together and they are two rings from the Alighieri jewellery brand and one of them is called the clouds in your mind ring and the other one is called the beginning of the plate and they're just like really sort of beautiful quite shaped imperfect looking gold rings and they are lovely. I, I like rings and I like earrings. I don't wear a lot of necklaces. I don't like things on my wrist actually. That was why I'm so surprised at how much I've taken to the Fitbit because I don't like things on my wrist generally. I don't wear normal watches. I don't like bracelets. I am quite picky with my jewellery. I'm not a big jewellery person. So earrings and rings are what I wear and I would quite like I've got a couple of really lovely costume rings but you have to, especially in the current climate, you're taking them off all the time to wash your hands and stuff so I feel like I would quite like some nice rings. Which leads me nicely to my big ticket wish list items. So none of these would have been bought in January for various reasons but mainly price. They are things that I would need to decide I was going to commit to buying and I would need to commit to saving for them ahead of time. On that list are Lisa Eldridge rings, particularly the Isabella one that's the garnet one and I think it's the Josephine. I like most of her rings to be fair. I wouldn't be turning away any of them if they arrived but those two in particular I think are beautiful. The garnet one Victoria Beckham has and she there's a picture Lisa Eldridge has put it on an Instagram where she's wearing it like on her pinky and I really like it and I just mm, so those Lee Seldridge rings are on there. The garnet one I think is one and a half thousand pounds and the other one is 1,100 so they're not going to be a one month item. I would need to decide I was getting them, save up and buy them but I would love them. I would also love some rings from Chippy which is an Irish jewellery brand and I've, I have a huge list of rings I would like. So she has again quite similar to the Alighieri ones. Um, she does just a plain band if that's what you're looking for but most of her rings come on a hawthorn twig band um, which I just love it just adds a bit of texture a bit of excitement so she has her crown of hope ring which is like five diamonds and I love that one and then on her Instagram there is two crown of hopes like one stacked going one way and one stacked going the other way and then in the middle there's a queen of hearts ring with a sapphire in it and I'm not a huge sapphire person but basically I'm low-key like please bring that ring out with an emerald in it because I would love two, queen, two crown of hopes with a queen of hearts emerald ring. That would be like the dream. Maybe she doesn't bring out the emerald ring. There's a hero ring that's a tourmaline that's in it. It's tourmaline and two diamonds and that would also look very nice in the middle of two crown of hopes. Basically I want two crown of hopes and then something in the middle. Um, but I love most of her rings. The Yumi and Magic one is beautiful. Um, even like her birthstone rings I love. There's some necklaces that I love. I love so much from that brand but as I say I don't wear necklaces that often although her necklaces are quite small so I feel like if there was ever necklaces I was going to wear I would wear them and they wouldn't feel sort of intrusive but I feel like I would really like some rings. So yeah, Chupi rings are also on the big ticket wish list items. They are all around about the £3,000 each mark and I want like three of them to stack so I mean that's not even happening in this year let's be real but hopefully over time I would love some chupy rings. That's what I want. Other big wish list items Louis Vuitton Pochette Metis which I always thought was the Matisse but I went to the store in Edinburgh last year and I saw the bag and tried it on and the man in the store was calling it Metis so I'm presuming given he works for Louis Vuitton that it is the Metis and not the Matisse as I was calling it but I feel like the Matisse sounds nicer. So it's like a little satchel bag. I don't own any Louis Vuitton bags and I feel like it's quite a key print to own in a bag collection. I love the size and shape of the Metis. I just think it's lovely but it's practical at the same time. I like the fact it has a top handle and I don't have a sort of chocolate brown bag like that. I feel like it would really fill a hole in my wardrobe. That is on the list. 
I also like the Mulberry Darley bag in the green. It's a completely different bag, but those two are my next sort of handbags that I might realistically purchase. In terms of like far off wish list items, I really like a Lady Dior, but yeah, that's um really far off wish list item. The Mulberry and the Louis Vuitton are the two bags that I'm sort of might actually realistically save up for at some point maybe within this year and the last big ticket wish list item which i think is the first wish list item that i am going to say that i probably will commit to saving up for is that i would like the vampire's wife falconetti dress in the green color i think it's so beautiful it's my birthday in july i'm hoping to be in dublin for my birthday um and i just think it's the perfect thing to be wearing on my birthday in Dublin, maybe buying myself a trippy ring. Just saying, just saying, I have a vision. We'll see if, you know, COVID vaccines come out in time to let me live the vision or if I save enough money to let me live the vision. But yeah, that is another big wish list item. So that was the dress of the decade uh, for the last decade as voted by Vogue. Um, Sally Hughes wore it her wedding. Kate Middleton wore it when she visited Ireland. Holly Willoughby has worn the red one on this morning. Like, everyone has worn a vampire's wife dress. And I really want one. Um, it's one and a half thousand, well it's actually over that, it's one five nine five. It's something I don't want to buy right now because, again, I don't want to talk about weight loss too much. But I would like to be down another dress size before I buy it and I would like to be down that dress size and have maintained being down that dress size for a while so that I know that I'm safe to invest in clothing in that dress size because I I mean I have some expensive clothes but I do tend to invest more in my accessories and I think the most I've ever spent on clothing I've got a Kate Spade dress that was around seven hundred dollars, and then I've got coats that were around sort of five hundred pounds mark. But those are like the most expensive items in my wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, I think ah, uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever spent any more than that in an item of clothing, but I don't think I have. I have saved up for bags and shoes in the past, but I've never really spent that much on clothing, so. It gives me the fear a little bit but I do really want that dress so I think that's my first big wish list item that I'm going to try and actually save up for and tick off and to go with them I would really like a pair of Dolce and Gabbana shoes that I would need to buy second hand and that opens up a whole other can of worms um, because they're not in season anymore they're shoes that I missed out on buying when they were in season and they sold out I don't know if you can tell, I've got a lot of Dolce & Gabbana items in my history that have sold out before I've been able to buy them and I'm still scarred by them. Um, somebody is selling them on Vestiaire but the photos aren't great and oh it's such a thing but there's a pair of green Dolce & Gabbana shoes that I would love to go with the Vampire's Wife dress but I think getting the dress is the, the main priority so those are the big wish list items. None of them were ever really in the running for my January purchase because they are such big high ticket items in terms of cost. They are the things that are sort of that top level stuff I really, really want. Then I've got my other wish list. Well, actually one of them maybe should be under considerations but I found it quite late in the month but I really, really liked it. But two of them I've spoken about before. Two of them were up for consideration last year for what I would buy as my self-gifting items. One of them is a coat from British Retro and it's beautiful, it's so so Christmassy, it's red, it's got a faux fur collar, it's kind of designed off a sort of 1950s Dior coat, it is absolutely stunning. And I nearly bought it last year but I felt like buying it as my birthday gift to myself when it was kind of unseasonal was a bit of a waste. So I bought some shoes that I still haven't worn because we haven't been able to go anywhere. So yeah, that that's a whole thing. But I then was nearly going to get it for Christmas and basically I was supposed to go to London between Christmas and New Year and that got cancelled obviously 
and buying the coat kind of felt a little bit redundant because it was a bit like well we're not going anywhere nice for Christmas to like take pictures and look Christmassy and it's the coat's been in stock for years so British Retro don't they do do seasonal items but the coat has been available for a while so it's not going anywhere quickly and that's almost I think why it stayed on my wish list for as long as it has done because it's like the opposite of what made me buy the shoes is that I feel like I'll always be able to get the coat in a sense like it's not going anywhere quickly kind of thing so if it's not quite the right time to get it the urgency is never there to say right this isn't the ideal time to get it but you need to just get it so just check out and that lack of urgency means that it stayed on my wish list for a really long time in the same way that that Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation has been on my wish list since before I was on an OBI but I just never really got around to buying it but I would have totally bought it when the free gift was on because it added that sense of urgency and it is that sense of urgency that I'm trying to not succumb to in a way but also not having it has meant that this coat has just kind of been on this wish list for a really long time. The other item is a Peaky Blinders t-shirt so again I talked about wanting this for my birthday last year I think it was um, and I absolutely love it but this was almost like the opposite end of the scale from the big wish list items and that it's like £20 or something and I was a bit like well do I want a £20 t-shirt or do I want to buy you know a pair of Dolce & Gabbana shoes because that is where the year of one is maybe you know it has, has its downfall in that everything is just one. So it doesn't matter whether it's a Louis Vuitton bag or a 20 quid t-shirt, it would count as my one item. And it's making me be like, well I want these items to be special, which is what I want. Because I want to really consider the items, that's the point in doing it like this. But it, it does mean I'm definitely not buying smaller things that actually, in a sense, I'm fairly sure if I had bought that Peaky Blinders t-shirt last month I would have worn it several times within the month whereas I haven't worn the shoes yet. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like th it's just something to take note of and be aware of but yeah I've wanted it for quite a while and I probably will buy it at some point but not yet and then I found this Etsy seller so this is the third thing that I was saying I found quite late. I found this seller who makes these beautiful dresses and I want about 50 of them so I need to like spend a bit more time kind of narrowing it down and deciding which one I would actually like but I would definitely definitely like one of these dresses at some point. They again are not cheap they're sort of around the 300-ish mark um, so they could be a monthly purchase at some point and um, they are something I do think I'll probably buy one of at some point but I need to look into it a bit more and make sure I make the right choice but there's two that are kind of front running so one of them's like a sort of deep red it's the gold embroidery it's like a sort of caftan shape and it's just beautiful it's got horses in the sleeves it's just so different to anything that you would get in the high street I just think it's beautiful and then the other one is again it's sort of caftan shape and it's grey and pink and I think it would go really really nicely with my shoes just to put it out there I could see it happening. The last thing that I wanted to talk about that I just very briefly considered were some t-shirts from Joni and I was, I've written t-shirts and I know I know off the back that there was more than one that I was looking at but the only one I can actually now remember is the Wuthering Heights t-shirt. I have the Joni Wuthering Heights jumper I love it and um, and this was because my friend Lauren saw something on their Instagram screenshotted it and sent it to me and then next thing I was just on the website having a look and I saw this Wuthering Heights t-shirt and some other t-shirts that I remember looking at more than one item and going oh these are really cute and again similar to the Charlotte Tilbury thing probably similar to the Peaky Blinders t-shirt similar to all the sort of small things that I buy without properly considering if I hadn't been doing this project I would definitely have those Joni t-shirts right now but whether I would remember in like three months time that I had bought them is a completely different ball game whereas I will know in three months time 
that I bought those Dolce & Gabbana shoes and that is what the year of one is about it's about not buying all those small things that I used to just buy on a whim without really considering so that I have really considered everything that comes in to my life this year and consider it both in terms of as these videos go on ranking everything that I buy in terms of excitement but also looking back at the usage that I get out of things because I don't want to just bring 12 things that I love that are super exciting into my life if they are 12 things that for all I love them and they're exciting and they're beautiful just sit in my wardrobe and don't get worn which is the danger that I sometimes find is that I do sometimes invest in these really special things that are such super sort of special things that they need special occasions to be worn or even if they don't need them I want to keep them for special occasions rather than just wearing them on a daily basis and getting my money's worth out of them so that's what I'm trying to step away from with the year of one but anyway this has been my first haul and considerations video I hope it's been interesting I feel like this one was quite full and in theory I'm hoping like in February I'll be a bit more like right this is what's come off since last month's wish list was gone through here's a couple of items that might have been added on and whatever I buy seeing if it was on this month's wish list or considerations or not and what what with time I do buy or don't buy or decide you know to forget about or whatever but hopefully going forward they'll get a bit shorter and snappier because there'll be less to go through because I'll be able to be like yes my big ticket wish list items are still the same you know and not have to explain them all thank you very much for watching this my camera battery is flashing at me so I'm going to leave it there I hope you've enjoyed it and I will speak to you in my next video bye